It's no secret that gymnastic skills come and go faster than other sports. These always changing trends aren't bad though. In a way, this keeps the sport pretty interesting, while also pushing gymnasts to get better and make it fun to think about where the sport is going. But sometimes they're banned because they're just that dangerous. On that note, let's look at the gymnastic skills from the past that aren't performed anymore. First up, the core boot flip. This is probably the one you've heard the most about because it's that famous. The Corbett Flip, which is named after Olga Corbett, gets a lot of people's attention, whether they've played the game before or not. The way this move works is that you stand on the high bar with your back to the low bar, jump backwards into the air, do a backflip, grab the bar again, and then swing towards the low bar. Standing on the bar is now against the code of points because it interrupts the flow of the routine, but Corbett did this skill many times before the ban, including at the 1972 Olympics. The Corboot flip was usually done on the bars, but it could also be done on the beam by starting with the high back handspring and then swinging down to a straddle position on the beam. At the time it became illegal to stand on a high bar, Olga had talked about how upset she had been. She said that gymnasts don't have a guarantee that they won't get hurt so for this skill to get banned didn't make sense. Honestly, Honestly, she doesn't have a good point considering the fact that gymnasts are always at high risk of getting seriously injured. Coming up, rollout skills. Rollout skills are gymnastic moves where the gymnast adds a half salto and rolls out instead of doing a full flip to their feet. The Thomas Salto, which was made famous by Kurt Thomas, is an example of this infamous rollout move. To go into more detail, this Thomas Salto is basically a back salto with 1.5 flips and 1.5 twists. The gymnast rolls out of the move at the end before standing up. In this category, the Prondunova is also considered one of the most dangerous moves a gymnast can try. You see, if the athlete turns too far forward, she could break one or both legs. She could also very easily break her neck if she doesn't turn far enough. Two of the few athletes who have ever tried the Prondunova have fallen to the ground in embarrassing ways. And while these two gymnasts didn't get hurt, many others who have tried doing this have gotten injured just during the learning process. One of the most famous cases was Alina Mukina's two weeks before the Olympics in 1980. This gymnast fell during a flip pass, and the injury was so bad that she couldn't move anything below the neck anymore. Now rollout skills have been outlawed in women's gymnastics for a while because the landing has to be so precise to prevent neck injuries. Plus in the 2017-2020 code of points, they were also banned for men's gymnastics for the same reasons. What's more, quad series. In the 1980s and early 1990s, many gymnasts did quad series, which is any series with four elements in a row on a beam. A lot of these gymnasts did back handsprings and layouts in different orders, and some even did the quad series with their mount. When the 1997 code of points went into effect, gymnasts stopped doing quad series because the rules for what counted as a connection bonus changed, which made these skills less valuable. So now, because of these changes, gymnasts usually just do three skills in a row instead of four. But hey, remember, just doing three is also super hard. Up next, most vault skills. Many vaults that used to be seen as advanced in the sport aren't really seen like that anymore. Since the vault's difficulty has changed a lot, these skills haven't gone away, but because they are easy, they're only used at lower levels. Once upon a time, vaults were very simple. Many gymnasts just did a front handspring vault or a Yamashita. A Yamashita, also called a Yami, was a front handspring vault in which the gymnasts touched their toes and landed in a pike position. Gymnasts sometimes did a yami with a half twist or a twisting front handspring to change things up, but in the 1970s, there wasn't much variety. Then came the 1980s and 1990s when the vaults got harder. They went from a Sukahara to a Yurchenko, and then to a front handspring, front salto, or double salto. Modern vaults, like Aminars, Changs, and double twisted Yurchenkos are much more complicated. Also in recent years, there's been a case. Simone Biles was not 
allowed to do some vault moves because the judges couldn't score them fairly and they were too dangerous for other gymnasts to try. The sport's governing body, the Fédération Internationale de Gymnastique, said the change in difficulty was made so gymnasts from countries trying to break through on a world stage wouldn't try the dangerous skill to boost their score, followed by belly beats. Belly beats are when a gymnast swings from a handstand on the high bar and slams their hips into the low bar. This move is often called beats or beating the bar. This helps the gymnast get going for the first move, and when it's done right, this move that looks painful actually doesn't hurt at all. But you see, the emphasis is on doing the skill right. For that, the bars have to be set up just right so that each gymnast hits the right spot. Once very popular, the skill went out of style when wider bars became more normalized. By making the bars wider, gymnasts now have more room to fly during bar-to-bar -bar releases and other moves. But to be honest, many bar routines no longer have the same smooth, connected rhythm that they did in the past. Let's look at multiple front handsprings. On the floor, many gymnasts used to do two front handsprings at the start of a tumbling pass before launching themselves into a hard skill. This move was used to gain speed and power, but like the rest of the obsolete skills, this too went out of style as round off back handsprings became more popular. Today, higher flips and harder skills mean that running is a better way to use the floor to gain power than doing multiple front handsprings. Moving on to Silivas Mount. This move is done with a double back salto that has been tucked and given two full twists. Keeping that in mind, putting together two twists and two flips takes a lot of skill, but this skill also depends on the athlete being able to build up enough power to get high enough in the air to do their spins and flips with control. Daniela Silivas of Romania was the first one to pull off this insane kick at the 1988 Olympics in Seoul, Korea. Before Victoria Moores did the Silivas in the layout position, it was the hardest gymnast move on the floor for 25 years. Apart from the neck part, this mount is hard because like most elements on beams that involve an inverted split handstand, it looks like you could get seriously injured if you can't split your hands exactly 180 degrees. Even though this skill isn't used much anymore, it helped Daniela win the gold medal for the beam at the 1988 Olympics in Seoul. Many gymnasts today don't want to risk falling right away because of the reward for doing a hard mount isn't big enough. After seeing Alicia Sacramon fall on her mount at the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, many teams decided it was safer to get on the beam without risking a fall. And so soon, the syllabus and other tricky mounts just went out of style. Next, Kamanasi Dismount. The Kamanasi is sort of related to the dismount we still see today. The front tuck half, but the twist happens at a different time. When the gymnast shoots her legs off the bar and starts to let go, she does a half twist twist into a backflip instead of the forward salto that is usually done in a toe front. The Komanesi dismount is one of many skills that are no longer done because they aren't as hard as they used to be. The dismount was named after Nadia Komanesi and shown off at the 1976 Olympic Games. At the time, it was one of the hardest skills that gymnasts could do, but today, gymnasts do more difficult skills that have forced the Komanesi dismount out of competition, not to mention, Back-to-back -back tumbling. Back-to-back -back tumbling is any tumbling pass in which a gymnast tumbles from one corner of the floor to another corner and then back to the first corner without stopping. It used to be done more often by gymnasts like Daniela Silivas, Oskano Omelianchik, and Dominique Dawes, but it's not done as often anymore. One of the reasons is that today, the focus is on hard skills that require more energy to do on their own without flipping out. Also, there's also more emphasis on landing, connecting skills, and form, which makes back-to-back -back tumbling hard to do without losing points in many places. Finally, Sukahara Beam Dismount. In this dismount, a gymnast does a round off off the beam and then goes right into a back salto without putting their feet on the ground until they land. It used to be a very popular way to get off a beam, but it went out of style when the value dropped far below how hard it actually was. Unlike the other skills on this list, 
The Sukahara dismount might make a comeback though. It was taken out of the code of points for a while, but between 2013 and 2017, it was put back in as a C skill. In those years, gymnasts couldn't use a C skill as a dismount, so this change didn't matter until the 2017-2020 code of points took away the requirement for a D-level beam dismount. Even though we don't see it as often as we used to, the last time it was done was at the Chicago Style Meet as recently as 2017. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about these gymnastic skills from the past that aren't performed anymore? Do you know of any other skills that have become obsolete? Let us know in the comments below. Also be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like these. See you in the next one.